Because the truth is, just finding a murmur is not enough. That murmur is sandwiched between two heart sounds and the examiners will absolutely expect you to comment on those heart sounds as it pertains to your differentials of the murmur. So in this video, I'm going to give you a way to visualize the heart sounds in your mind at the bedside. And we're going to be using the example of mitral stenosis and aortic stenosis as we go through. Okay, so picture this. We have the heart, which has chambers and valves. And the valves are really just like little doors that open and close to allow blood to move around the chambers. So suddenly this heart feels like a little house, right? It's got little rooms and doors and it even has electricity. How fun is that? And inside the house, we have family members, two adults, Anna and Pete, and two children, Michael and Trisha. You see where I'm going with this? The children, Michael and Trisha, are in charge of their doors or valves, mitral and tricuspid. And the adults are in charge of the aortic and pulmonary valves or doors. And in this household, on a good day, in health, the children are playing together and their parents are also playing together. They're on the same team. They are in sync. So the mitral and tricuspid valve will close roughly at the same time, giving the total sound of S1, heart sound 1. And the aortic and pulmonary valves will also close at roughly the same time, giving that second heart sound, S2. So S1 is the combination of both the mitral and tricuspid valve closing at the same time as the children play together. And S2 is the combination of both the aortic and pulmonary valve closing together as the parents remain in sync. In health, because everyone is playing well together, we hear two valves closing as a single heart sound. But of course, in health, as we know, the left side of the heart has a lot more pressure in it than the right side. So those doors are going to be closing with a bit more of a bang, so to speak. The doors on the left side of the heart are going to be the loudest doors and make up the majority of their respective heart sound. So that's how I want you to start thinking about the heart sounds. Basically as doors opening and closing, two doors at any one time, making one single sound together. Mitral and tricuspid, S1. Aortic and pulmonary, S2. Now there are situations where these doors are not in sync and you can get splitting of the heart sounds and that can relate to various pathologies that lead to either electrical dyssynchrony between the chambers, so bundle branch block situations might change this, or where there are abnormal pressure differences between the two sides of the heart that lead to altered timing of the doors closing on either side. And that typically happens in something like atrial septal defect, for example. But in this video, I don't want to get too bogged down with all that stuff. What I want to focus on is the loudness or quietness of the heart sounds and how you interpret that. So we said that heart sounds are doors closing and a door can be gently closed or it can be slammed shut. So let's use the example of mitral stenosis. Mitral stenosis means that blood is having trouble getting through the mitral valve. And as a result, the left atrium is going to be sort of pumping iron every time it tries to open that door, right? The left atrium is going to be squeezing hard to get that door open and make that blood flow across the valve. And when in the cardiac cycle does the blood flow across the mitral valve? This is happening during ventricular filling or diastole. And so that turbulent blood flow will lead to a diastolic murmur, which happens after the mitral valve opens. And it might take some effort to open that door, and so you might also hear an opening snap. Once the door is open though, then you'll hear that diastolic murmur all the way until the door is closed, all the way until that S1 heart sound. And the loudness of S1 is important here. In earlier stages of mitral stenosis, the door will be forced open, but then it's quite open, right? It's fairly ajar. And so when it comes to closing, it'll be slammed shut. But later, in very severe mitral stenosis, we might find that the door doesn't open very much at all. So then when it closes, it can be quite quiet. 
And so that will affect the loudness of that first heart sound of S1. And of course, other signs of severity of mitrosinosis would be evidence of congestive cardiac failure. And of course, that's not the only thing that can affect S1. S1 could be loud due to a mechanical mitral valve, for example. Now that's not going to sound like an organic heart sound. That's going to have its own little clicky metallic sound but it's still a type of door that's being opened and closed around that S1 sort of placement in the cardiac cycle. So we just covered the example of mitral stenosis, but now I want to contrast this with aortic stenosis. When reading the clinical skills books, it seems that aortic stenosis doesn't really give that slam door effect. I guess that's because there's a difference between the mitral valve when it comes to how that door is actually closed, right? Using that pressure in the left ventricle is part of how it closes. Whereas the aortic valve is more like a little cup of blood, right? It's stopping that blood from refluxing back into the heart as the left ventricular pressure falls. Mild to moderate aortic stenosis is probably not going to give you a big mass massive slamming of the aortic valve, right? And so S2 will sound like it normally would. But one of the signs of severity in aortic stenosis is a quiet second heart sound, meaning the valve didn't really open very much in the first place. And so closing the door is going to be a very underwhelming audio experience that is very quiet. Now, of course, there is so much more to teach and learn when it comes to these heart sounds. This is not a comprehensive tutorial on all the ways that the heart sounds can be abnormal. But the goal today is to enable you to actually connect with what you are listening to when you hear S1 and you hear S2. I want you to start thinking about these as doors closing and two doors making up a single sound. And then as you go through your short cases and revise the murmurs one by one for your clinical exam, I want you to consider what is happening to these doors. Are they not opening well? Therefore, they close quietly. Are they slamming shut? Are they out of sync in some way because the left and the right heart aren't playing together? They've got different pressures or they've got different electrical start points. Why is that? So when it comes to the heart sounds, tune into these and listen for S1 and S2 very intentionally. What's the volume of the heart sounds? Are they normal? Are they quiet? Are they loud? Are they split? So the two sounds that make up one heart sounds are actually separated or out of sync. And how does that connect to the murmur or the other clinical signs that you're finding in this patient? So no doubt we'll be coming back to those heart sounds again when we cover the murmurs themselves, but I really hope this helps you to feel more connected to the clinical signs as you detect them at the bedside. And if you are studying for your clinical exam, you are going to love this video. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you again next time. <laughs> Bye.